I have an example. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so they're just the, um, the basic shapes, so they're not um, um, very artistic. But we just wanted to see for a predator that has um, that is a visual predator, so it detects that basic size and shape, what would attack mm-hmm. it. So this is it's just made out of regular plasticine that you can buy from the shop, but it's quite moldable. And then after that, it's a bit hard to tell, but the colour's slightly different. Mm-hmm. So I covered it in red dirt from on site. It's gone a bit dark now, but it um, because the skinks look to be camouflaged to the same colour as the soil. So I put the right. soil on the on the model to see to um, represent the basic colouring too. And then I have an example here of a um, a predator. <laughs> So this is um, not an actual predator of the skink. This is a raccoon skull. <laughs> so we'll pretend it's a predator, but basically if it makes, if it attacks the model skink and leaves an imprint, you can then ID what predators have attacked the skinks just using um, ID of the bite and peck marks. So we wanted to do that because... Um, well, you can't use live skinks and they're, they're quite, <laughs> quite cryptic. I was unlikely to hide behind a bush and see one get eaten. So the next <laughs> best thing to figure out what would attack a skink is to make pretend ones, put them out in the bush. I made about 125 models and sat them wow. out in the bush and then would come back every day and re- record what markings I saw and then you'd smooth down the models and then the next day get, get new recordings. Yeah. So you sent me some of of um, I think a crow that had been having a go at one. Like what what yeah. other s- species did you see in these imprints? Well, with the with the crows, they were quite savage. So they'd quite often it looked like they'd go for the head, remove the limbs and the tail. So sometimes all that would be left is a tail, <laughs> just a chunk <laughs> of the <laughs> tail of the model. And so they had a good. Good go, yeah, and nice. I'd leave um, up to fifteen models at one particular site, and they'd um, have a go at one, couldn't eat it. Then they'd go the next one, and then the next one, and they'd have a go at eating every single model. <laughs> so unfortunately, <laughs> the crows affected my results a bit because they were the only thing that attacked my models, except for rabbits. Um, one rabbits. of the photos I sent you that you can see there's the big teeth and then the mm-hmm. little teeth. So some rabbits had a good good go at nibbling the models. Really? So not a predator, but <laughs> an interaction wow. with the models. <laughs> <laughs> That's a so they're they're they're, they're pretty good looking models. How long do they take you to make? Uh, I had to um, bribe some friends with um, pizza <laughs> <laughs> and help me because they took forever. I ran out of time, so I just had to say, please, <laughs> I'll pay with you, <laughs> you with pizza. Just come in. We had the uni had an open day too, and I um, at the stall I was just recruiting people and rolling plasticine <laughs> oh, at the stall. But, yeah, because plasticine's pretty hard. Some, it helps if you microwave it a little bit, but, yeah. Longer than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so were the, the ones that the crows had a crack at, were they the ones that got the most mangled? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they wouldn't just like the rabbits who gave a little nibble and went, oh, mm-hmm. that's not food. They'd go, well, I'll kill this thing, take the head off, the limbs off and the tail <laughs> off and then give it a good try and see if I can eat it. And then, <laughs> yeah, they were savage. But um, because no predators um, attack a non-moving object I also ended up that's why I put the cameras out in the field so I had cameras at sites um, log piles with skinks and without skinks and in open space to see if there were differences in predator behavior and I also did some um, Mm -hmm. bird surveys to see if there were particular birds that hung around a log pile. Did you did you find that there were particular birds? Yeah um, well (laughs) Corvids again. <laughs> Corvids <laughs> tend to like to hang out around um, around log piles, but um, birds as well. And I think it's um, it's not always necessarily just log piles with skinks, but because it's a um, semi-arid environment and it's quite patchy, 
um, it makes sense that the birds would hover around food sources, lots of mm. little vertebrates hang around log piles. Yeah. Are, are the, co- the crows there and the corvids there, with, like historically, is that part of their natural range? Yeah. So there's the Australian raven, the Teresian crow and the little crow. And so they're all native to that area. But I surveyed um, at, at varying distances away from um, a mining area with the landfill and it seems that um, around mine sites where there's artificial food sources that they can be overabundant. So even though they're native, they're still a problem predator that you have to deal right. with. Right. 